Hello and welcome everyone to the Week Ahead Commodity Report, where we of course will be reviewing the markets for the week ahead. Uh, the most highly anticipated FOMC meeting of 2023 and quite possibly the most pivotal moment in monetary policy history. That took place last Wednesday when the Federal Reserve, they rose interest rates by 25 basis points. That's the smallest increase since March of 2022. At the end of its two-day policy meeting, Fed Chair Jerome Powell, he stated that inflation that has peaked and that the disinflationary process that was now underway, validating a reason why the central bank is now easing its foot off the accelerator. Now, as convincing as that may sound, somewhere traders, they just don't believe the Fed. Maybe that's because the Federal Reserve has a credibility problem, or maybe it's because the Federal Reserve, they have never been right on inflation and have a proven track record of getting it wrong time and time again. Looking back throughout the whole of 2021, Fed Chair Jerome Powell, he played down the biggest year-on-year -year rise in inflation in more than four decades, characterising the record spike as transitory, which inevitably that will always be remembered as the worst inflation call in history by the Federal Reserve. And we all know what happened next. The Fed's major policy blunder that sent a total of 27 commodities ranging from the metals to the energies to agriculture blasting through all time record highs to post their greatest year on record in over a century. Will the Fed get it right this time or are they once again on the verge of another major policy error? Only time will tell. However, if Friday's US jobs report is anything to go by, then the warning signs are clear and present that another wave of inflation is already underway. The Fed has now increased rates by 450 basis points since March, raising the federal funds rate to a level not seen since late 2007. And yet the labour market that continues to smash expectations and remain red hot. Friday's data that showed the US economy added 517,000 jobs in January, pushing the unemployment rate to a 53-year low of just 3.4%. The figures were more than double the estimates for 188,000 new jobs and well above December's gain of 260,000. Whilst that's good news for workers, it's bad news for the Fed. A red-hot job market with strong hiring and a low employment rate that fuels persistent inflation. This is because companies, they feel compelled to keep boosting wages to attract and keep workers and they often pass those higher labor costs onto the customer by raising prices their higher paid workers also have more money to spend which in return that boost inflationary pressures in the economy combine that with other factors outside the fed's control such as china's reopening and it's not impossible to see why the world could be faced with a second wave of inflation this year chinese citizens that were locked down for nearly three years they are now embarking on a revenge spending and travel binge that will drive up prices around the world as pent up demand that creates too many dollars chasing too few goods. As traders very well know, there is a strong correlation between inflation and commodity prices. And when inflation accelerates at a red hot pace, so do the price of commodities. Since the beginning of the year, a long list of Wall Street banks from Goldman Sachs to JP Morgan to Bank of America, they have indicated that the macroeconomic backdrop for commodities in 2023, that is looking more bullish than ever, ultimately indicating that we could be on the verge of another record setting year ahead. In recent days, that chorus has once again become louder with a growing list of the world's biggest financial institutions advising their clients to pile into commodities now, ready for the next big leg higher. Whichever way you look at it, one thing is clear. Jerome Powell and his colleagues at the Fed, they have now given the green light for the commodity super cycle, which is welcoming news for the bulls, but painful for anyone sitting on the sidelines who must now decide how much FOMO they can handle. Looking ahead, Fed Chair Jerome Powell, he will take front and centre stage again next week as he appears at the Economic Club of Washington in an attempt to persuade the markets that the war against inflation has been won and reiterate that the Fed is on course to bring inflation back towards their 2% target. Regardless of what Jerome Powell says, traders are already convinced that the Fed is setting themselves up for another policy error by prematurely declaring victory on inflation too soon. Whichever way you look at it, there's really nothing historical you can point to for what is going on in the markets right now. The current macroeconomic backdrop that is fueling one of the greatest wealth transfers of our lifetimes, presenting savvy traders with back-to-back money-making opportunities almost on a daily basis. Whatever long-term goal you're looking to achieve through trading, 
Whether that's to create a full-time income, a second or replacement income, or just to earn a better return on your savings, then now is the time to take action to really give yourself the gift of a better 2023 year. Here at the Gold and Silver Club, we're consistently banking over 10,000 points profit, which we've been transparently documenting through our weekly videos. So if you're trading at one lot, that's $100,000. And if you're trading at 10 lots, that's $1 million. As you can see from our testimonials, the majority of our clients at the Gold and Silver Club are utilizing our proprietary research-driven trading approach. They're already making in excess of six and seven figures annually. If you want to make 2023 your best and most profitable year yet, then now is the time to take action. Just go to www.jointhegoldensilverclub.com to learn how our mentorship program can help take your trading to the next level. So with that, let's move over to the charts and we'll talk you through exactly what we're looking at here as we head into a new week. So first of all, with palladium. So unlike platinum or gold or silver, which all got hammered on Friday, on Thursday through to Friday, in fact, which comes back to the point that it's absolutely a trade market. It is not a buy and hold market. As you know, over the month of January, we've booked over 10,000 points profit on gold here. And now I see massive opportunities for reload at much better prices. So palladium is the first one I will put on your radar. Absolutely. I'm liking palladium down towards 1600 or lower for accumulation. Uh, these are some of the best prices that we've had in over a year here on palladium. And palladium, unlike gold, silver, platinum and copper, had much less of a severe sell-off on Friday as well. So I'm looking again areas of accumulation at 1600 or lower on this market now gold for me was absolute classic in the sense that it's created a massive rug pull here later on in the week on thursday through to friday so of course we highlighted to you that these levels are not zones you want to be buying at when this market is trading at nine month highs so we've seen gold break out to the highest levels here in nine months after Wednesday's FOMC statement, breaking out here to 1,960 US dollars per ounce. As you know, we've continued to bang the drum over the whole of December that you wanted to be accumulating gold under 1,800 US dollars per ounce. At no time have we ever suggested that you want to be buying it above that level. And as you can see, this is the norm that you've got a lot of traders out there. They've ended up FOMOing in much later into the move after we've already seen from low to high over a 3,000 point move or 20% breakout in three months here. They're bought too high around the 1940s, 1950s. And subsequently, we've, of course, seen the typical sell-off that you get after the European Central Bank, Bank of England. That's been further the compounded by Friday's non-farm payroll. However, I look at this very opportunistically. I like the fact that we have had now this sell-off, this liquidation around the highs here, basically a bull trap, which is now coming to areas of interest here for gold, especially if gold was able to it may not do this, but to come back down to areas of liquidity, back down towards the levels it broke out from at the beginning of January, which would be that 1830 to 1840 zone. We may not get it, but basically the two major ways that I would look at this potentially playing out as we transition into the next week with either we may get some degree of support into the close here from Friday, which was the 1860 zone. So there may be a bit around this zone. You start to see a retracement going into next week. Equally, it's possible that we get a third drive lower. So, so far, we've only had two days of selling pressure. We could have a third drive lower, taking the price back down towards that 1835, 1830 zone. And that potentially, if you see liquidity in a bid at that zone, this could be a level where you start seeing buyers come back into the market, which would be similar to our mantra over the course of December, where essentially you want to be buying gold at 1800 or lower. So we'll have to see whether we're able to get there over the next week. But Platinum to me is also providing some nice opportunities here as well. We've been very patient with Platinum, waiting for it to get back down to much lower levels. At the start of the year, Platinum broke out to 1,114 US dollars per ounce. At the moment, it's now broken all the way back down to the lowest levels since middle of December. So I do like Platinum at $980 per ounce or lower here, which is of course where we're sitting at the moment into Friday's close. For very much like Palladium here, that I do like this market down towards 1600 or lower which then brings me over to oil very simply and i'm going to take you out to a raw chart for just a moment here you can see it's very clear this is essentially a range bound market it's been range bound since november here all we're seeing with this market is coming back up towards 81, 82 US dollars per barrel. It comes back down towards 73 to 70 dollars per barrel. It gets a bit again and rotates back towards the upper end of the range here. There's no reason to really expect anything different 
unless we were to break and start closing below the lower end of this range. So if, for example, we do start closing below $69 per barrel on oil, yes, that would suggest we could start to see much lower prices. However, for now, all we're doing is coming back down towards the lower end of the range, which you can see multiple times in November, in December, at the start of the January, this is where oil is getting a bid. So from $73 down towards $70 US dollars per barrel here. Very much a range of our market and very much a trader's market as well. We've been in and out of oil here multiple times, buying at the lows, banking at the highs, buying at the lows, banking at the highs. None of these markets at the moment are buy and hold. All of them, if you don't bank your profits and make sure you're regularly locking in those windfall amount of profits, there's only going to be one other scenario for you. If you're not willing to take your profit off the table when the profit is there, well, essentially the opposite side of the scenario is you're going to end up with no profit. So again, it comes back to the point, you need to keep locking in your profits, regularly banking. You can look at gold here, which basically from Thursday through to Friday, pull back a thousand points. Now, if you've been like us on gold here, where we basically banked a windfall amount of profit, and now we're looking at opportunities to reload on this market, we've actually been gifted here with the sell-off that we're seeing at the moment on this market, which isn't to say we can't go lower. It's quite possible that we do get more of a pullback as we go into next week as well, but already we're hitting some very attractive zones right now on Palladium, on Platinum. So for us right now, heading into next week, exciting times ahead, especially given that we've got much lower prices now in order to buy back many of these commodities to take advantage of the typical cycle that we get over this quarter. And whatever long-term goal you're looking to achieve through your trading, whether that's to create a full-time income, a second or a placement income, or just to earn a better return on your savings, then now is really the time to take action to give yourself that gift of a better 2023 year. If you want to maximize your money-making potential and thrive, not just survive in these fast-moving markets, then you need to adapt your strategy to the current market conditions and most importantly, utilize a professional research-driven approach. One of the biggest obstacles that tends to hold back 99% of retail traders from achieving their desired success, it's not having access to the correct professional strategies, institutional level data, and market intelligence to make confident decisions with accuracy and certainty. There is a huge gap between the top 1% of professional traders and the bottom 99% of misguided retail traders who simply rely on outdated technical analysis and gimmicky technical indicators that do not work in these markets. If you want to get yourself out of the bottom 99%, and into the top 1% who are actually crushing it and making six, seven, and eight figure returns in these markets right now, then you need to utilize a professional research driven approach, or you'll just end up wasting lots of time, money, and effort, and you have no results to show for all of your hard work. In these rapidly changing markets, you need to be constantly innovating and evolving. Technical analysis and outdated technical indicators, they will not work. Those days, they're long gone. If that's all you're relying on, then the odds are already massively stacked up against you. If you want to change your results, then you have to change your thinking. If you want to learn our exclusive research-driven approach that is never taught to retail traders and only reserved for professional traders in the banks, the hedge funds, with access to powerful game-changing insights, including where banks and hedge funds are buying and selling in real time, the key liquidity zones, so you can enter and exit the markets with pinpoint precision, the fundamentals, the macroeconomics, the capital flows in the market, alongside the daily, the weekly, the monthly, and coarsely real-time data-driven cycles, the intermarket correlations, the ratios in the market. Then, of course, you need to join our professional mentorship program. As we head into the new year, we are in one of the greatest eras of wealth creation that the world has seen. If you want to successfully capitalize on the huge money-making opportunities ahead and build significant life-changing wealth, there is no better time than now. If you want to upgrade your income, then you need to upgrade your skills. Never underestimate what you can achieve in the next few months from now with the right guidance and mentorship. Time is the most valuable commodity that we have. Make sure that you don't waste it. If you want to join a community of successful traders and take your trading to the next level, there is an opportunity for you to do so. As a member, you get access to our exclusive live trading room webinars. You get access to real-time trade ideas, access to institutional research and market intelligence, access to our Private Members Academy website, and also support and one-to-one -one mentoring. For more information, just go to www jointhelivetradingroom.com. The link is also below this report in the description. So just click on the link, make an application, and we will, of course, get in touch with you ASAP.